Hi everyone, my name is Shai and today I'm going to teach you how to stride in Vanguard Overdress and everything that comes with striding. Now striding is a older feature from the original era of Vanguard, a um, little over like five years ago, probably closer to like 10 now. And it was recently reintroduced into Overdress. Uh, however, there aren't really a lot of explanations for how to do it that I've seen. And I've seen a few new players uh, confused with the concept of it. So I'm going to explain all the intricacies of striding, how to stride, what happens when you stride, uh, etc. So first let's talk about uh, ride lines that stride deck sets tend to have. They all follow a similar formula. They have a typical starter. They have a grade one that gives you a crest, which we'll talk about. This crest is what gives you the ability to stride. They have a grade two that does something unique. And then they have a grade three that is a retrain of a really old grade three from years ago. So Chrono Jet Dragon is like an eight year old card. Um, it was re-released for Overdress with the exact same text, just with the ability to be played in Overdress. So that is why this Vanguard has 11,000 power, even though Overdress cards typically have 13. Uh, that's why he has a GB2 skill. You can see that little red GB marker, which we're going to talk about as well. And other stuff like that. So let's say the game is starting. Oh, you have Chrono Dran. And then you place your grade one. And your grade one is always the same thing in every stride deck set. When this unit is placed by riding upon a specific starter, draw a card, and then you get your specific crest. So this crest is obviously Chrono Jet Dragon, which we will talk about. You can see the first thing the crest says is you can perform stride, but you can only ride grade threes with Chrono Jet in their name. So this uh, prevents you from, let's say, playing Bruce and then striding or something like that, or playing Jejeweled and then striding. Uh, stuff that's pretty impractical, but they still have to do that to future-proof cards. And then it also makes the power of your grade three vanguards uh, 13k. So this lets you use your old Chrono Jet Dragon that has 11,000 power. It just modernizes it for overdress. And then a crest gives you 5,000 power for every face-up card in your G-Zone. So as the game ramps up and you get more and more face-up cards in your G-Zone, which happens naturally, uh, your deck gets stronger and stronger. And then they typically have a fourth uh, flavorful skill. So for the Chrono Jet one, you can choose one of your grade three or greater rear guards at the start of your battle phase and change it to grade zero. So uh, you get your crest at grade one and you ride up and then you ride up. And now you're on three. So you can stride once you're on three. However, your opponent has to be on grade three as well uh, if you want to stride. Or you have to be on grade three for more than a turn. So I'm saying this because a lot of ways, or one of the main ways uh, other decks counter stride deck sets is by staying on grade two. Let's say they went first, they ride to grade two, and then I go next, I ride to grade two and I swing, and then their turn, they stay on two. Now they do this because... Uh, they want me to ride Chrono Jet and then not be able to stride. I just have to swing a Chrono Jet, do absolutely nothing, and then pass turn. This is a good counterplay because a strides are very explosive. So it's just a just a way to slow stride deck sets down and rush them down, basically. So it's important to know this if you want to play a stride deck set because you have to be prepared to play around it. Now, like I said, uh, in order to stride, you have to be on three. Your opponent also has to be on three, or you have to be on three for more than a turn. Now. Striding happens immediately after the ride phase. So let's get, let's say I go second, my opponent placed their three, and now it's my turn. I can place my three, and now I can stride right away. So right after the ride phase, before your main phase, uh, you stride. Now, the cost to stride is written on the cards. So let's take a look at Fate Rider here. You can see stride step. Choose one or more cards from your hand with the sum of their grades being three or greater and discard them to stride this from your Vanguard face down. Now, you'll notice that says face down. You can only stride cards in your G-Zone that are face down. You do flip some face up uh, naturally as the game goes on. So it's important to remember that. Now, to stride into Fate Rider, uh, you'll remember you have to discard cards with the, the sum of three or greater. So I can discard Steamfighter Bali. He's a grade three. So just discarding him will let me go into Fate Rider. I can also, let's say I don't have a grade three in my hand. I can discard two grade twos because their sum is grade three or greater. And then I can go into Fate Rider. And then every stride deck set also has a grade one that says uh, while you're paying for the cost of stride, this card is a grade three. So for Chrono Jet, Steam Breath Dragon, uh, for Messiah's, it's Destiny Dealer, uh, etc., etc. So I can also discard Steam Breath Dragon to ride into Fate Rider. Now, uh, let's talk about the stride itself. So just taking a quick look at Fate Rider here, at the top left, you'll see he has triple drive. All strides have triple drive, so important to remember to check three times when you do them. And then you will also see its power is 15,000 plus. Now, why is it a plus? It is a plus because you are adding its power uh, along with the power of the Vanguard it is on. So Chrono Jet Dragon, if you remember from the crest, isn't 11, it's actually 13,000. 
So 13,000 plus Fate Rider's 15,000 means right now Fate Rider is 28,000. So pretty strong, 28,000 with triple drive. Uh, pretty strong by overdrive standards. So now let's talk about what happens here. Let's say I were to discard Steam Fighter Bali to go into Fate Rider Dragon. Bali has a skill that says when this card is discarded for the cost of stride, you can draw a card. Every stride deck set has a card that has this kind of skill, so you can draw one. And now every uh, stride deck set Vanguard also has a skill when you stride. So this one, Chrono Jet Dragon, says when your G unit strides during your turn, you can counter boss one, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, and put it at the bottom of your deck. So as soon as Fate Rider is placed, if I discard Bali, I can draw one, and then I can counter blast and put one of their rear guards to the bottom of their deck. Now, you will also notice Chrono Jet Dragon's first skill says GB2 on it. That is a generation break. Now, GB skills are unlocked, basically, depending on the amount of face-up G units you have on Vanguard or in your G zone. So, Fate Rider is placed. I have one face-up G unit, so I'm at GB1. So, something like my upstream dragon that has a GB1 skill is active. So now I can use his GB1 skill. If I do not stride and I call uh, upstream dragon, I don't have any face up G units anywhere. So he does absolutely nothing. This skill doesn't work at all, no matter what. You need to reach the requirements to GB in order for the skill to activate. Now it's important to note that it is if you have one or more for upstream skill. So I can have like GB3 because I have two cards face up in my G zone and one card face up in Vanguard. Upstream skill skill still activates. It'll activate all the time now. So that's important to note. Now let's talk about Fate Rider's skill when he attacks. When he attacks, you can counter blast one and turn a card face up and put one of your regards to the bottom of your deck uh, to do whatever. The rest doesn't matter. What's important is the cost. So you counter blast one, you flip a card from your G zone face up, and then if you have a regard, you put it to the bottom of the deck, do whatever. Now, this is important because Fate Rider just turned a card in your G zone face up. That means you are now at GB2. So if you have any regards with GB2 skills, now uh, from now on for the rest of the game, they will activate. So you do your whatever with your Fate Rider, you drive check three times. And let's say your turn is over. Now what happens to your stride? Uh, the first thing that happens in your end phase is your stride returns to your G zone. And then all of your, uh, do, at the end of your turn, do this skills activate. So as soon as you're done attacking, your stride returns face up. Uh, everything else on your board resolves and then your turn ends. So its strides are temporary. They are only for your turn and then they go away uh, when your turn is about to end. And your Vanguard returns to its original base power of 1300. Uh, when a stride ends, it is always returned to the G zone face up. So in this case, if I use Fate Rider's ability and then I end my turn, he goes up to the G zone and now I'm at GB2 because I have two cards in my G zone. The next turn when I stride, I can go into another Fate Rider, etc. Keep turning stuff face up and getting a larger uh, GB. Now let's talk about the second stride in the Chrono Jet deck. It is Chrono Dragon Next Stage. Now this one has a different stride step from your Fate Rider Dragon. Every stride deck set follows this formula. There is one stride where you have to discard a sum of three or more, and there is another stride where you have to discard a grade three with a specific name. So for Chrono Dragon, it's a card with Chrono Jet in its name. For Messiah, it is a card with Messiah in its name. For Shiranui, it'll be a card with Shiranui in its name. For Luard, Luard, uh, you know. So in order to stride into next stage, I cannot discard Bali. I cannot discard Steam Breath. I have to discard Chrono Jet in order to go into it. You will also notice that Chrono Dragon Next Stage has a GB2 skill. So this means you can never go into Chrono Dragon Next Stage as your first stride because it will just not do anything. It will just swing for 28 with triple drive and then that's it. So because of that, this stride is viewed more as a finisher. You have to go into a Fate Rider first in order to unlock GB2 and give uh, Next Stage an ability. So in short, that is this is pretty much exactly how strides work. Uh, every stride deck set comes with two strides, one with a discard three and one with a discard a specific name. They have a Vanguard that has a when your G unit strides during your turn, uh, you can do something. They have a grade three that says when this card is discarded to stride, you can draw a card. And then they have a grade one that lets you uh, discard it to stride as well. That is basically how striding works in Overdress. And I will go through Messiah as well, just to show you that it's the same thing. So here I am with the Messiah uh, stride deck set. 
you have your Neon Messiah starter, and then you have your Sleep Messiah, which is when this unit is placed, you get your Alter Ego Crest, exactly the same as the Chrono Jet Grade 1. And then you have your Unique Grade 2, and your Grade 3 with 11,000 power, a GB skill, when your unit strides skill, you know, all that stuff. So, this crest is different from the Chrono Jet Crest in that its flavorful skill is at the end of your turn, unlock all of your opponent's lock cards and bind those units. Everything else is basically the same, but with Chrono Jet replaced with Messiah. And the G-Zone is also exactly the same. This deck has two strides. Uh, one of them requires you to discard cards at the sum of three or greater. And another one has a discarded grade three with Messiah and its card name in order to go into it. And it also has a GB2 skill, so you can only use this after your first stride. So you can see it is literally exactly the same as the Chrono Jet deck. There's also a card that says when it's discarded, draw a card. There's also a grade one that lets you discard as a stride, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So functionally, the same thing. And with that, that uh, pretty much wraps up this video. So I hope this helps you understand how to stride, how to play against it, how it works, and all the little things that come with it. And yeah, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I think I hit every point, but there may be some I missed or some specific situations or whatever. So thank you for watching. Uh, bye.